Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about the Elseworlds crossover. So last night, it was the first night of the crossover. We have so much to talk about. I have so many notes to go through. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year or tomorrow when we have night two of the Elseworlds crossover. So we're going to have constant coverage of the Elseworlds crossover until it ends Tuesday night on Supergirl. So last night's episode, Sunday, was The Flash. So it's changed for Supergirl. And this episode was really, really good. I really liked it. It had a nice, fun, comedic tone. And it had an inner lion darkness that's going to be developed on as we head towards Gotham City. So overall, a really, really great start to the crossover. Obviously, as it goes on, we're going to get more substance as we head into the next two episodes because this is setting up the idea of reality being changed and what's going to be happening in the crossover. So, yeah, let's go right ahead and talk about the episode. So, at the start of the episode, we get to see the Monitor giving the book to Dr. Destiny. They sort of introduce the idea of who Dr. Destiny is as a person. He's a doctor. The first scene is just introducing his core ideas as a character that he wants to develop on that no one else really loves listens to him but he has all these ideas but then we go on and we see Oliver as Barry and Stephen does an amazing job he is very very comedic especially as we head towards the end of the episode but this starting scenes but these starting scenes were amazing very funny and he says especially when he goes into the fight after he's been with Iris I think that's cla some class piece of TV and as we go to the fight scenes in the warehouse you get to see him running there overshoots it by like 14 blocks or something Cisco's there once he finally gets there when he actually tries to beat them up he goes you have failed this city so he does his signature line and he's like wrong superhero dude and so it's just the idea of him actually becoming the flash and this is explored later in the episode so he has to use his powers and he basically overshoots his lightning and he totally fails and he awakens Amazo. So Amazo is the first like main villain of the episode but he's more of like a side villain just for this specific episode and maybe he'll come back sometime later but this was like maybe the only weakness. I didn't feel any connection to him. Yes, he's a robot, but I don't think the CGI was that bad. I thought the CGI was good. I just didn't feel like a lot of these scenes earlier in the episode when he's sort of flying around were that good. And at the end of the episode, it got good when Superman, Supergirl, The Flash and Arrow all teamed up. Then it was amazing. I loved that last scene. But throughout the episode, I was like, eh, okay, Amazo was all right. And so then we go over to Barry, who's having sort of like a parallel to what Oliver's going through with Iris and Team Flash and how no one believes that he is actually not Barry. And Barry is actually the Green Arrow, and he realizes as he's sparring with Diggle in Argus that reality has changed, and no one realizes that this reality has been changed. And then, as we see him fight Diggle, you can see that his fighting style is very similar to Oliver. He sort of has more control of himself compared to what Oliver is actually doing as the Flash right now, so he does like have abs and like he's sort of more into that green arrow character and they realize that their reality has changed and they end up finding each other and they end up finding each other because their personas have switched at star labs and you get to see them working together and sort of like trying to convince team flash that they are actually different versions of themselves that their reality has been changed and at first nothing works it absolutely doesn't work and there's some amazing jabbing going on of the writers in this episode jabbing the flashes tv show jabbing arrows tv show the way that it's written like talking about like barry says say you're my lightning rod to iris and it always works every time and there's just some amazing moments like that where you really laugh as a fan of both of these shows and just showing how different their tones and like the ideas they tackle are and also the flash mentions cicada and the big bad there is a small mention of diaz and the bertinales who is obviously a link to the huntress and later in the episode there is a link to agent liberty and what's just happened in the season finale of supergirl so it was really nice seeing those links to the past episode rather than just a complete ignoring of the characters but also in the episode there was no alex and also there was no Felicity or really anyone else apart from Team Flash. There was Diggle 
who made a small appearance but didn't really do anything else. So later in the next few episodes, that's when we're going to get those other characters. If you were wondering, it's because this was the Flash's episode. Tomorrow, we're probably going to get more of Team Arrow. And then as we do that, we'll get more of Team Supergirl. I'm fairly sure Brainiac 5 is going to be appearing at some point. But anyway, let's move on to talk about the next thing. And the next thing I actually want to talk about is Lois Lane and Superman because those scenes were just my favorite and I loved seeing them actually interact and I think Elizabeth Tullock did a brilliant job at bringing to life Lois Lane this different version I really do like her so far and what really intrigued me probably the most in the whole episode was when Lois revealed she actually went to Argo there is lots of talk of Argo and what her and Superman like them actually going off planet like she wants to report about it so it just references to her reporting but the fact that the writers have actually looked back at Supergirl and have been like Yes, we're going to talk about Argo is just so exciting to me. I really do hope we go back there very soon. And what really piqued my interest was when Kara and Clark were at the Kemp farm on Earth-38. Clark actually, before they get interrupted by Barry and Oliver, he says, There is something I need to talk to you about. And so prior to this, they were talking about love and the idea that love is everything and things like that along those lines. But what was he going to say? That's a cliffhanger. Like, I, in my mind, being hopeful, I was like, are they talking about Allura? Or are they talking about mon -El? Like, that really, really was, like, a moment for me where I was sort of just having to wrap my head around. What, what was he going to say? Like, I really wanted to know that. And I think that will get answered as we head later into the crossover. Maybe it's the fact that he wants to move back to Argo, or maybe he does have something to reveal about Allura or what's going on on Argo, or maybe it's to do with mon -El because they were talking about love and how love is so important. So Lois and Clark are together, but since mon -El has gone, Clark hasn't actually seen him since he was actually on Earth, and maybe he was gonna say something to do with that, maybe he has some information, I don't know, but that really, really piqued my interest. And so as a fan of mon -El, as a fan of Allura, as a fan of Argo, I was really, really intrigued, and I wanna know what he was actually going to say. And so additionally, working together as super friends with Clark, Lois and Kara actually watching behind them they get to do an amazing scene after they've been locked up they escape and they go to Earth 38 and this scene is a complete subversion of what happened a few seasons back that being four years ago and that was when Oliver was actually training Barry and he shot Barry in the back and that was like a major WTF moment back then and so we get a complete subversion and it's instead the other way around Barry, our Barry, is actually the Green Arrow now, and Oliver is the Flash, and so they do the exact same thing. Barry pulls back his arrow, and they say, here we go, and then Oliver actually takes a run, catches the arrow, and at first he was like, before this, he was like, you don't have the automatic bows in the grass, do you? And he was like, no, I'm not, I'm not the Green Arrow, but then it's revealed in a hilarious scene, it's just pure class seeing Grant actually act like this because it was just hilarious. I really found myself giggling. I've watched that bit like five times now and he gets an arrow to the back and it was just an absolutely brilliant moment. I thoroughly, thoroughly loved that. And so with him actually doing that, it sort of spins into this idea that they have to go into each other's personas, that Barry has to become the Green Arrow, he has to get darker, and that Oliver has to become less dark and become more comedic, become more light, become more like the Flash, and so they can use their powers better, because when Barry dislocated his finger, he could only do it when he was angry, and also Oliver could only really control his powers when he was sort of excited, and so that's going to be explored, and I just really love these moments that we've been getting in this episode, like just the character moments between especially Oliver and Barry, but also Kara, Clark and Lois really shined in this episode, along with Team Flash obviously just behind. And so now let's move on to the next thing. So Superman, Supergirl, Green Arrow and The Flash all arrive back to Earth-1. So this is the first time that Superman has ever come to Earth-1. This was just incredibly exciting, especially in the reveal when he rips his shirt off. That was just amazing. So I love Tyler as Superman. And so they come to Earth-1 and Barry gets to say the line, You have failed this city. 
and when he actually says that, that gave me chills. That was just like such a great moment seeing him actually dive into Green Arrow, dive into the darkness and become this person. And like I mentioned earlier in the episode, I thought this was a really good fight scene and it really worked for me, especially with Oliver running through the city and like everyone sort of working together, seeing Supergirl, Superman all work together it was just absolutely crazy and I loved it so I'm looking forward to more of that in tonight's episode so the last thing I want to talk about was the end credit scene and this was with Gotham and the fact that Cisco actually tries to vibe the monitor and as they do the monitor is able to tap into the space-time continuum and he's able to actually talk to him and that's just sort of showcasing his power and how strong he is and so it's revealed in the background that John Deegan is actually in Gotham City so they all plan to head to Gotham City with drawing from Jim Lee that's just a nice shout out we get the ending scene in Gotham and we get to see Batwoman on a tower in Gotham City and they're all going to be heading to Gotham so this is so exciting thank you guys so much for watching this video hopefully you enjoyed it tonight's episode is going to be the second part of the crossover so if you're looking forward to that let me know in the comments below what do you think of this episode I thought it was absolutely brilliant and so I'll see you guys later goodbye